video I want to go over some basic programming of the robot. I assume you've already watched the video on calibration and setup and your robot's going. Um, so let's start out with um, up here at the top here under program. So currently I have a program that I created called home and I taught a position that I like for my home position. Let's say I want to create a new program and I'm going to call it test. We'll hit load program and it automatically creates the program test and I have a blank slate here to work with. Um, right here in my in my programming area. So if I minimize this and I go to my containing folder where either my source code or my exe file is, you'll see that that's where test is. So if I have programs I want to delete, I can delete them here. Um, this folder also has my um, uh, calibration file. That's where all the calibrations are stored. Um, and then also I have some default settings. If you need to look at your defaults for your calibrations, they're also here as well. Just a little side note there. So we'll go back to our uh, software. So I've created a program test. Um, so now let's talk about creating some moves. Over here I've got speed. So this is percentage of speed. Right now I'm at 20% speed. Um, you know, the fastest obviously would be 100. Um, and I've got acceleration and deceleration settings. So the first one is duration. The second one is percentage. So this is a little bit confusing, but the duration is the percentage of the move. If I have a move that's 100 millimeters long and I set this for 10, that's going to be the first 10% of the move, or in the case of if it's 100, that would be the first 10 millimeters. So the acceleration is going to only apply to the first 10 millimeters of the move, and what it's going to do is it's going to start at 25% at of the program speed. So, so if, it's, if it, the speed is at 20%, it's going to reduce that uh, by 25 and start at that speed and then ramp up to the 20% that you want for the remainder of the move. And the deceleration, it's the same thing. Um, uh, the first number is the duration, so in this case the last 25% of the move, or in this case if it was 0 to 100 millimeters, so this would be the last 25 millimeters of the move, are going to decelerate from 20% speed down to a reduction of 10%. So um, that's how the uh, speed, acceleration, and deceleration work. Um, so my robot is at my home position, so I'm going to just teach a position there. And then let's say, let's reduce these down to 50 millimeters. So let's jog the robot forward 50 millimeters. And then let's teach that position. And then let's, uh, let's go in the Z direction. Let's go down 50 millimeters. And let's teach that position. So now when I hit play, if I start at the top and hit play, it's going to run those three positions I just programmed. So let's say I want to keep running those. I want to go in a loop. Well, I get a, a tab number one here by default. So let's let's come over here and let's put in a jump to tab. Let's change that to tab number one. I'll click where I want it. Click jump to tab. So now I have jump to tab at the bottom. So now when I start playing it, it's going to run those positions and then it's going to jump to the top and run them again. So now I'm in an infinite loop. I'm just going to keep running these three positions over and over. So now let's say that um, I only want to run this routine uh, three times. So I'm going to hit stop and let it finish the next move. Um, so I can, I can keep track of how many times this runs using my registers here. Um, let's set that to zero. So I have registers one through eight here that I can use. Uh, you know, we'll just use register one. And what I'll do is I'm going to zero it out. So I'm going to come up here to the beginning of program. And I'm going to say that um, register one equals zero. So I want register one to equal zero. I'm going to put that right here. Click that button. So now I have register one equals zero. Okay. So now every time this runs I want to increment it. So you notice here it says num and then I have or plus. Um, so if I want to increment it I can do um, one equals and I can just do plus one. And so now it's a plus one is going to increment by one, or I could count by twos or threes or whatever I want, or I could decrement, I could put minus one and I could count backwards. Um, I just want to do plus one. So right here after my last move I'm going to say register one equals plus one. So now every time this runs it's going to increment uh, my register here. So we'll just test that out and uh, see how that works. So now you can see it's counting up to one, and when it runs it again, it'll run it to two, and then the third time, three, and so on, we'll keep counting. So I'll hit stop. So now let's say I only want it to run three times before it stops, and I need a way out. So right after it comes back up here to tab number one, I'm going to give it a way out. I'm going to tell that if, let's, let's see here, 
let's say if register one equals three, then I'm going to jump to tab 999. That'll be the end of my program. So I've put these values in here. I'll click on that. I'll put this right below that line. But I don't have a tab 999 yet. I need to put I need to put that at the bottom. So I'm going to create tab number 999. I'll put that at the bottom. So now when I start my program at the beginning, it's going to zero it out, and then it's going to run it the three times. And when this gets to three, it hits the end, and the program stopped. It only ran it three times. So that's how I can control um, the number of times I want a program to run. Um, now, if I wanted a program to jump out based if an input came on, I could do the same uh, thing. I could come up here and um, instead of this line, I could put an if input. You know, if input uh, my inputs are 22 through 37, I could say if uh, input 22 comes on, then jump to tab 999, and I could put that right here, and that would do the same thing, and the program would run in an infinite loop until that condition became true. That input comes on, the robot jumps out of the program. Um, and I can do the same thing if, it, if an input goes on or, or goes off. Um, and then I can create as many tabs and jumps as I want to navigate and jump around. Um, I can also call programs. Um, so let me delete that out of there. We'll delete that. Um, so after this runs three times, let's say that I want the robot to go back home. Or um, better yet, let's say I want it to go to my rest position. So I can come here and I have a program that I created earlier called rest. So I can create rest. I can call program. So it's going to call program rest. So, um, you know, once I run this, it's going to run through this three times. And then when it's done, then it's going to go to its rest position. So we'll let it do that. Um, okay, so it went to rest. The program moved faster than the robot. We saw rest pop up there, and um, it ran rest. And then rest has a return in it, so it came back here. Um, so the return allows you to come back. So let's go. Let's load up rest and look at it. So the rest program is basically just a move and a return. The return tells it to go back where you came from, and that's why it ended up back in our test program. If you don't have a return, it won't come back. So, you know, I could basically create a new program, we'll call it new, and then if I do nothing more than just put a return in it, then I can go back to my uh, test program, and I can call new, call program new. So now when I execute program new, it's going to jump into program new. And then when I hit the return, it's going to go right back to where it came from. So you have the ability to jump in and out of programs. You can't go two layers deep, though. You just have to have a main routine that jumps into a program and comes back. Um, additionally, you have, um, so we've talked about um, those functions. We've got modify position as well. So if I don't like this position, I can modify it and change what it is. I can delete positions. I can call programs. I can return to a program. I can auto calibrate from the program so if I want to run a calibration I don't typically do that I typically do it right here um, but you could calibrate in the program if you needed to you can wait for a period of time if I need the robot to sit for five seconds or if I need it to sit for one second prior to a gripper closing um, for example let's say uh, my gripper is on 45 and I want to turn my gripper on um, but before that I need it to wait so um, usually I only do one second, not five, so let me delete that five and we'll come right here and put in a wait for one second, um, open the gripper, turn the, and then um, and then we could uh, you know, make a move, we could put in a, a move to the position and then set the, uh, you know, set the gripper on or off or whatever we want to do there. Um, so you've got wait times. Um, you can wait for inputs to come on and off, so if you have a condition where one of these inputs is waiting for a machine to finish or waiting for a fence to close, you can sit and have the program to sit and wait till that happens. Um, like you said before, you can create tabs, jump to tabs. You can conditionally jump to tabs if uh, in inputs are on or off. Uh, we can also control servos in the program um, 
analog output 0 through 7 are set up with a servo module so that you can control servos and run them to positions. And then we already talked about registers and if registers. Um, and then you can also put in comments. As long as it isn't a command, you can put anything you want. So I can so I could you know call this um, you know start a program or you know whatever I want it to be, and then I can click in here and I can put comments in, and the 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 command will just ignore those and go right past them. Um, but you can put in all the comments you want. Um, jogging the robot, obviously millimeters, you can jog it in any direction you want. Um, joints, you can set these to anything you want. Um, so that pretty much covers basic programming. Um, the other calibration video covers all of this for calibration. Um, input outputs, um, you can you know use these to turn inputs and outputs on and off as you please, so that you don't have to run them from the from the console here. So for example, let's uh, just gonna run the robot home real quick so you can see the gripper. So my gripper is on, uh, connected on output 45, that's the one I chose for whatever reason. So I can put in 45 here and then I can control that gripper from right here. And I can put in as many as I want so I have a quick way to quickly come and toggle things on and off and I don't have to come in here and run a, run a command line to make that happen. Um, so that pretty much covers everything I wanted to cover in basic programming. Um, if you have any questions, please email me. My email address is... Uh, here on the project page, if you come down here, um, you can see links to the other videos, the kinematic video, here's my email address, um, and if you want to donate to the project, I'd certainly appreciate it. Um, thank you very much, and thank you for watching.